Hello everyone and welcome to the Melio Movement Podcast. This is a podcast that brings reality, it brings real stories and it brings real people into the limelight of you watching this. I want to spread awareness that us normal people do go on these journeys and come out the other end succeeding in life. Every single guest that I have on this show has been through something in life and now is doing absolutely truly incredible things. I want to share their journey and exactly how they get there. As always, a massive shout out to Upsing Global. My sponsors for these podcasts, I really, really appreciate the support. Their website will be down in the description and their Instagram page. Please go and follow and give them a little message to say thank you because then that helps us keep the project going. Big love and as always, Melia fucking movement, baby. Melia movement, baby. Lee, thank you for coming down. That's all right. Um... Absolute pleasure to have you on. I've not really known you that long, no. but I've been intrigued by day one about just an absolute ball of energy. <laughs> um, you've recently won the Arnold mm-hmm. Bodybuilding, um, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, and there's a story behind this, and it's absolutely fucking incredible. Um, so I saw her post something on her story about visualizing winning that, and I was like, You've got to come on and tell your story. <laughs> so I messaged, and I was like, would you come on and tell the story? Have you have you got like anything during your past bring up? You're like, I'm a forty year old single mum, I've got fucking lies. <laughs> <laughs> and Stories, then, I've got like, war and peace. <laughs> <laughs> so um from that moment I was like, Yes, come on, something attracted me to it. So thank you so much for coming down. I know this is gonna inspire a lot of people because as we said yesterday, it was like there's no age limit as to what you can achieve no, yeah. in life. It's literally like you can start your life over a whatever oh, God, age. Yeah. Um, so as always get my guests to send down to who they was as a child I want to know little Lee and why you are such an inspiration and a successful Lee now um, and an amazing mum that's got a lovely child that doesn't swear <laughs> he <but> doesn't <laughs> swear <laughs> um, at all <laughs> so yeah just send down to how you was as a child um, the upbringing and who you are today yeah so thanks for having me it it seems really weird that people (laughs) want to listen to this but anyway um yeah so i grew up um like in lansing and i grew up with my mum and dad and my brother um we fostered and um, we fostered since i was like four um so we always had loads of different um people in our home loads of different kids obviously with loads of different backgrounds. So I've always kind of been around a variety of different people. And my parents have always kind of brought me up to be like really open, non-judgmental and just grateful really, because um, they've always kind of taught me that whatever you're going through, someone's going through worse. And like just be grateful for what you've got because the kids that were coming in and out of our home like had probably the most horrific things ever happen to them and so yeah we were always just brought up like that i had a really good upbringing (coughs) i mean like you can imagine some of the kids coming into our house absolute riffraff yeah (laughs) so we did used to get up to some bits and bobs and stuff and um i feel that i was probably looked at as the better one because my brother was a bit of a lad yeah, so yeah. he was always getting into a lot more trouble than me and like, <laughs> i would slip under the radar like proper yeah, slip yeah. under the radar um i weren't horrific or nothing i was i was a little bit naughty <coughs> i think we all kind of were and like this is gonna oh my god i can't believe i'm gonna say that this but back in them days <laughs> you fucking old back in them days like we were just kind of allowed to like go out when we wanted and yeah. Because there were, this is really, there was no phones. The fucking Obviously, we, did, yeah, we yeah. used to have phone boxes. <laughs> so we used to go, like, we used to go, oh, if we wanted our mates to call us that we weren't allowed, if we were grounded and weren't allowed to hang out with, we'd be like, meet, like, I'll go down the phone box, call me on this phone box at six o'clock. And we'd, like, run down and be, wait that for it to ring. fucking mental no, hearing that now. I mean, from our age, it was like, I think I had a sendo when I was at school. And that's like, my mum let me have that. I was only on like five a credit once a week or something. No, we yeah. had no phones. And so, um, and because obviously we only had the house phones and then your mum used to pick up the phone and listen to you. Like, yeah, that's it. They was combined, didn't they? You're literally like, what are you doing? <coughs> like trying to have a private conversation yeah. here. Um, 
so yeah we just used to go out and do what we wanted like my my upbringing was pretty decent like I said school I, w- I wasn't overly good at school but like I said my brother was a lot worse yeah. so it kind of let me slip under the radar like I don't find like academic work easy or nothing like that yeah. but um like I kind of did what I ha- I've always been the sort of person I'm lucky that I've always done bare minimum yeah to kind of get by but I think I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes you don't have to do so much to get by no and like back then like I didn't really have I didn't know what I wanted to do I didn't have a vision or nothing I was really lucky where my parents like if we showed an interest in something they would try and get us involved so like with sports and stuff like that if 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 we all wanted to do something they would make sure we could do it. Now, I don't know how they made sure we did it. My dad had his own business. He was a mechanic, so he had his own garage. Obviously, we fostered loads of kids as well. Um, My mum didn't have a particularly great upbringing. She just wanted to give back. Huge. That's And that's, so like, my mum was exactly the same. She didn't have the best upbringing, but she has given me and my brother absolutely every ounce of being a mum that she can. She's basically, it's like, goes one of two ways, doesn't it? They can go to like, I was treated like that. That's just how yeah. it's meant to be. And that's all they know. Cycle. Or they can literally break the cycle and go, no, actually, I want to give everything yeah. that I wish I had. Yeah. And yeah, she she's just always felt quite passionately about that, which I do as well. Like, yeah. I would, in the future, that I see myself doing the same sort of thing. I'm real. Yeah, because, um, like, if you can have an impact on one person, I th- like, for me it's worth it you don't have to be famous and have an impact nah. on like nah. millions but it for one person for me would be enough yeah so yeah we kind of um grew up like that um always people in and out our house like i said we um might have got into a few scrapes or whatever but i was never as bad as my brother <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was a lot worse than me so i got away with a lot of shit yeah um but yeah, we we weren't particularly rich. We didn't have loads of money. Dad obviously worked his ass off. Mum worked her ass off as well. I remember um, mum working nights at the hospital because obviously there was loads of people in her house and she would. my dad would come in and she would go out. So they were proper grafters and we've always seen that. Yeah. So they like brought us up with a really strong work ethic. You do you know what I mean? If you want something, that's fine. You can have it, but you need to work for yeah, it. 100%. Like they wouldn't have ever just bought us something without us having to or understanding what it took to get it. Oh my god, yeah. There's yeah. no way. Like where, like there's no way. If we'd have said, "Oh, we want them trainers," they would never have gone out and bought us mm. them trainers. But I think it was a bit different in no, like in those days. Like, <coughs> like stuff wasn't like. I feel well sorry for kids now with Instagram and stuff oh. like that. How they there's fifteen year olds that look older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, how I'm is fine. your face looking flawless? It's mental. I remember my so my dad so my mum and dad owned a pub and then they, Oh my god. They, then they Dream. left that and then they had to go and um so they would clean my dad would clean the co op and then go and do a full day on the building site and then go back and do more cleaning. My mum would take me and my brother in the morning to a dentist to clean that then we'd go to school and then afterwards one of them would come and get us and I remember I had this pair of rugby boots and I was in a rugby team and all of them were private school boys so yeah. they're all turning up in their Range Rovers and everything and I was really good but I was the only one in there that we didn't really have a lot of money well, I'm turning up in a Volvo and there's like fucking tape to the back of the don't like, diss a Volvo <laughs> there's, like, <laughs> there's like tape to the back of like the brake light or something and like I remember my boots broke and I cried my eyes out and then all of these little kids are like looking around me like why is he crying? Why doesn't he just get just another go. pair? But it's like, my mum and dad, I think they were like 38 pounds, I think they were, but my mum and dad had to work like 10 hours Yeah. to be able to get to me that pair yeah, of boots. Yeah. And like, they did always drill into me. Like, I was shocked when you started talking. Like, There's not many people that mums would tell them about being grateful for what they've already got. Mm. Um, a lot of guests that we've come on haven't said that that was what they was drilled into him. So you, you had that. And I, my mum and dad definitely did. Did they do that for you? Yeah, 100%. But I think as a kid, you get a little bit naive to it unless you see it first hand so mm. for me it's like be grateful I'm like what you want about it? Just, do you know what I mean but then as I grew up I did learn that like if someone buys you a drink on a night out now they might have to work an hour to afford that 750 100% do you know what I mean and also my mum and dad were pretty decent with boundaries yeah so like like if they said something they meant it 
Uh, that's just something that I take for as well. So if I say something to someone, like my mum's like, you never break a promise or something yeah. like that. Like I'm the same. I say it to my son now. Um, it, like even if he's arranged for his friend to come around, he's like, oh, I'm a bit tired. I'm like, I don't care, mate. You've made a promise to yeah, that kid. Yeah, he's coming around. You, like that's how it stays. Yeah, uh, huge. They, they were the same. But also if they said, uh, like, if you do this, you ain't going out. Yeah. They'd mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd push it. Like, I remember running, sprinting <coughs> down my road to get in for 10, <laughs> like 10 p.m. at night, because I knew if I was one minute late, yeah, she it. would fucking grab me. 100%. And I remember coming back off my nut one night, like, <laughs> proper off my nut. There was me and my best friend, and we, sorry, mum, but I feel like we'd taken acid or something like that. So I was, <laughs> I love it. And we were, um, <laughs> like, bloody um, lamp posts like yeah, coming yeah. down <laughs> on our heads and we're like running down the road to try and get back for 10 p.m and we came <laughs> remember we come in obviously off our tits yeah and um like crash trying to be quiet but we're crashing about because like you know what it's like it's like when it's when you're tripping you're all a bit like <laughs> <laughs> and mum had mum had set the bed up because we had quite a small house mum had set a bed up in the living room for me and my friend to stay yeah. on and I remember us laying in there and like the walls coming in. So my friend got up to go to the, the walls were coming in. She was shitting herself. She got up to go to the toilet and I was like, mum, she's just drunk. Leave her alone. <laughs> anyway, my dad went in to see how she was. She's carrying in the toilet Ma. going, I'm a filthy animal. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, this is going on. Yeah, like we were a bit late. So then we couldn't go out for like two weeks. Yeah. Because my best friend basically used to live with us. She was from a traveling family. So um, she stayed with us for a lot of the time. So we got into a lot of shit together. Um, But um, yeah, I remember once as well. um, This is just going off a tangent. No, no, listen, we love it. Love it, love it, love it. My dad had been away, like traveling. I was in Spain or something. So we'd had the house to ourselves. Oh, no. Yeah. So we'd had a few people round. And um, they knew I smoked to that point. But um, we'd been smoking and stuff. And there was a few, like, um, like, <laughs> um, bifters left in the old. <laughs> so my mom, I remember my mum came back. They came back early. And we were like, what the fuck? I think they do that on purpose, Why you do know. They do that? I don't just... know. They think, oh, we're waiting for two weeks and then it's like 10 days and yeah, the house actually, is a shithole. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. absolute shithole. You've got people around and they pulled up and they said they could hear the noise outside already. Yeah. Literally, you know, you're in trouble. Anyway, she comes in, sits down, and like everyone, they're, they were pretty chilled, really. We used to have people around all the time, yeah. like parties. They weren't bothered yeah. about it. Um, they were bothered about the fact that she. She picked up one of these thinking it was a cigarette. But it weren't. And she's yeah. fucking hell. Yeah. Mumsy was stoned. Yeah, I couldn't say nothing, could I? Just sat there like, what? <coughs> this is not a good situation. And what did she say? She had a lovely time. Oh, yeah. Fucking lovely it. time. Obviously, she weren't, they weren't best pleased the next day. No, but of course not. I was literally like, what the fuck? I bet on the side and away from Dad, she's like, hey, you got any more? Got any more? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll cost you. <laughs> <laughs> profit off the mum. pocket money. Love it, love it. <laughs> yeah, but no, we had a proper decent childhood. Like I said, there was, um, like, I feel really lucky to have been brought up in that family because, like I said, having the people in and out of my life that I've had amazing. and, like, we're, obviously I'm still in contact with loads of them. I, I was going to yeah, ask, yeah, are yeah, you in loads contact? Of yeah, them, like, amazing. Um, like, um, one we're really close to, obviously he's got kids, they're my nephews and nieces and, and yeah. so, yeah, there's loads of... Um, like I call them brothers and sisters because yeah, they are. Yeah, they're family. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. 100%. So I feel like I've got a massive extended family, which is yeah, nice. I don't think just because you're not blood shouldn't be family. No, one hundred percent. Like it's literally if you're that close, you're that close. Yeah, they've lived with us, and like they've got secrets of mine, I've got secrets yeah, of theirs, and I think it, that's then. how it should yeah, sort of 100%. be. Yeah, so I was really like lucky in that respect. Um, like left school, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted a job. Um, where I was going to give and help people. I, I never knew it then, but I did. I didn't know it was because of that. Whereas yeah. I do... Subconsciously, you were programmed to that. Cause yeah, that's you I couldn't there. sit in an office all no. day um, and be corporate. I knew that. Also, I'm a, I'm on a bit on the spectrum and I've got ADHD, so there's no fucking way I'm <laughs> sitting anywhere. Couldn't but... imagine you sitting still on the phone. Nah, just like, absolutely not. No. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and also, I'm one of those people, like, if you annoy me, 
I'm just going to tell you yeah, right yeah, So yeah. there was no way I could no. do anything like that. So I knew I wanted to do that. And so I got a job as like a support worker for like with kids who were in and out of care and stuff like that. Through that, went on and did my social work degree, um, become a social worker. Sick. Yeah, so... Um, at what age was that? That was quite late, really. So I kind of did that. Well, it wasn't this late. You've got to remember, I'm fucking old, Brad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> This is, going back okay. to, <laughs> this is going back 20 years you're like fucking hell you 20 then 20 doing social work it's massive that's good uh, probably about 22 22 um, yeah so I'd been a support worker in between that time which, yeah. I, which I loved um, and I was really reluctant to do it because I didn't want to go through act- from working with the kids to yeah. being sat in an office yeah. which unfortunately is a little bit like that but um and like nowadays, it's very different. And in, in the end, it's just because of the government and shit like that. The job's not what it was. Yeah. But um, I did enjoy it and I loved it. And then um, just I met my um, ex-husband when I was 24 and then was with him for 15 years and then got married when I was 30. Now, like, I mean, the relationship was quite abusive, like more mentally abusive. Yeah. Um, but which I, I believe is 10 times worse yeah it's hard so. because you don't real you don't actually realize it's happening no. i didn't realize until i was out of it mm. what had happened and i didn't realize how it had changed like me as a person because yeah, I, I just think like it's because couples argue bottom line but then mm. things get said and then you go back to being all lovey-dovey and then things get said again and then it just becomes routine and the normal and i think um like so he's ex-military and he has his own issues and i think a lot of it is his it's obviously his issues and it stems from that and like now we have a completely different relationship like he's had help and stuff like that but at the time i honestly genuinely believe genuinely believe he didn't know he was doing it yeah i think that's his issues and unfortunately it was unsavable yeah and like and the toll it took on me i didn't realize until afterwards i didn't know it was happening like my whole attitude to everything had changed yeah um i was a completely different person um i wasn't who i was like growing up um like i'd always had a really grateful mindset and like i said would always work for everything but because of his job and stuff we lit we i had a really charmed lifestyle and could you go into a little bit of detail about the lifestyle? like i like we lived a good life i've or i've always ridden horses and um like i had two horses um was driving nice cars just didn't have to do a lot first class holidays <laughs> didn't have to do anything yeah. do you know i was what? just at hicks and green having a coffee and there's loads of home mums there so that's what you were okay, that's so it do you know the tom bag and yeah but, I'll I was, get the bill. but I, yeah but i wasn't yeah. even a mum at the time no. oh I, really like no, no i wasn't even a mum at the time and um like in so in my head i've never been one of them girls that wanted to get married and have kids that's just never been me i yeah. kind of thought if it happened it happened but like a lot of my friends were like i want a massive wedding i want this and that and i'd be like mm. Mm. Rather, I'd rather go on holiday, mate. Yeah, it's mad because you've been brought up to not... That's not gratitude to you. No. That, that's not things, but then it's like you've gone from one end of the spectrum. To I, and I changed, I was like <clears throat> that. And I think our relationship was um, very volatile and I would be bought things to, like, say sorry or to make up for what he was doing yeah keep you there to keep me there sort of thing so it and then that's what i became i don't particularly like the person i became because it was just about stuff and i had stuff we had shit loads of stuff there was yeah. stuff everywhere like like if whatever new phone was out it would be there whatever new tv was out it would be there like apple anything app our house was just apple <laughs> <laughs> literally do you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. everything watches cars just handbags clothes everything every, like everything. all material shit that is nice and i believe if you're in a decent mindset that can add to your life yeah 100 percent. but it's instant gratification yeah it's it's you feel like dog shit so you're gonna get it's why people overeat i suppose you feel like dog shit so you do something to make yourself feel yeah. good at that time they ain't gonna dry the tears when you're in the bed on your no own, and then oh. and then 10 minutes later yeah a new fucking pair of shoes is nice when you're tottering around your kitchen then you feel like shit again yeah or you're being told you're shit again and it's just a cycle of um it's, it's such it's a very toxic 
cycle to be in. It's very hard to get out of. It's hard to get out of it and it changes you as a person. Like you look at other people and think, what the fuck are they wearing? And I'm not like that. No, no. And it makes you... You sculpt into that sort yeah, of Yeah, a horrible person. And I am genuinely... I couldn't give a fuck what anyone's wearing. If you're a dickhead, you're a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what clothes or what trainers yeah, you're in. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I don't care. Like, you can drive whatever car you want. If you are a prick, I'm not going to talk to and you. I think, I think that is why, sort of, you relate that like, you do see people leave, um, like, quite nice lifestyles to just go and be happy. Mate, no, I, it took and most, me. Most millionaires and that are, are miserable. I agree, and I know some. Yeah. And they are <laughs> the most fucking miserable people I know. Um, don't get me wrong, they, they like... They have nice stuff and go to nice places. They're swimming with the pigs and all that sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, then, but they're just they're they're not happy. Yeah. But um, I to I'm not gonna lie. I remember debating with my best friend whether I should stay or go, because on I got an, a message from a woman on mother. It was on Mother's Day actually. Oh, fuck. fuck. Yeah. My son was even two. So he was one, and I got a message on Mother's Day um from this woman, and my ex had been basically leading a double life so yeah no way. yeah fuck yeah leading a double life and i was like what the fuck um and he obviously denied it but it was true and then it transpires that there was like loads of other stuff going on there was other women um there was a shit ton of debt um like the stuff wasn't our stuff um, Stalled on cards or whatever you can get on. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. It, so basically, we didn't own anything. And it, it, this was just complete secret the whole time. Yeah, Kept complete from, shock. Fuck. Like, I was like, what yeah, yeah. the hell? Um, but it took me, I remember sitting debating, thinking, just stay. Just fucking stay. Because I had nothing. I hadn't, been, I hadn't been working in social work. I'd been riding. Yeah. Just having a nice life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Doing whatever the fuck I wanted, really. You can't. Um, uh, it takes someone to walk away. Like, I would have to sit here and say, like, if you've got a cushy life at that, some, and I do know some women in these situations, and they. Uh, do you know what? A lot of my best it. friends, like, I since splitting, I left a circle of friends, not because they're bad people. I to this day, I love them with my whole heart, and at that point, they were good for me. They're not good for me now. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that they're not good people. But for mm. me, it's right different. now, where I'm heading and where I'm growing, <clears throat> they're not there. I love them with my heart and I wish them well. Yeah. But a lot of them, uh, and a lot of them are in those situations now. And if they're happy with it, I don't judge. That's absolutely fine. I, I do think going through life, like, and I've realised this recently, just like, I'm on a journey now. There's certain friends that fit into that. And there's certain friends from my old past that don't fit yeah. into that. But there's nothing to say in five years I changed my path and then my old friends fit back in. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I'm i more than happy. I'm not one of these people that are like, oh, you can't just come in and out of my life. No. No, like, Agreed. If, if you're in my life for like five years, you go and do your thing and then we cross paths again in five years, call me. I'm there, but it's it's mad like when you make that decision for yourself and then people can't think of it that way. Like we was talking last night, I think yeah. people are in your life to serve you. And whether you serve someone for five years, three years, two years, like if you're going to catch up with me down the line, brilliant. Yeah. It's about mindset as well, yeah. I think, and growth mindset. And if people are ready to grow and if they're not. And yeah. like there was that time in my life, I, I, I weren't growing. I was just, I'd gone back. Yeah. Like, I wasn't grateful for nothing. I didn't care. Like I didn't have to, I think we talked last night about filling up your car. Yeah. <laughs> Like I would, I didn't know how much it cost to fill my car up because I would never have looked. Fucking I just hell. used to like fill it up. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, there was a point when I decided to leave everything. So I just want to. Yes. The night. The night. How long did it take you for that thought to come for you to leave? Was it a lot, a lot of thinking and planning, or did you just think, oh, do you know what? Fuck this. I'm I done. didn't think. No. Well, at the time, so my parents <coughs> had recently <coughs> retired. And um, they'd sold their business, and they are like couple goals, really. They're yeah. in they they're in their seventies now. They're in their sixties then, but um, they were travelling around New Zealand and Australia, yeah, I remember you saying that last night. <laughs> like just yeah. living the fucking dream, really. So um, when this happened, I had I didn't have them around. I was like on my own, and I did it for two weeks. I didn't tell anyone. Fucking hell! I just like tried to process it in my own head because I process things slightly differently yeah. as well so I, I have to sit with things sometimes and obviously Miles wasn't even two 
um and i had i didn't have any money because i didn't i wasn't didn't do anything yeah like i was like what the fuck do i do that is the danger of that lifestyle yeah like did you always have that fear? Or no, did you just I didn't think, think of it yeah. bad. I was literally a different person. I was like, just didn't know where money came from, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't in a, a grateful way. It was in like a toxic way because it was a fixer for me or things were fixers for me or going out to eat was a fixer for me yeah. or buying something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Or, also for me, buying things for people, I'll buy that for you. Yeah. Like, because it made me, because I like, in a way, serving people is selfish because it makes you feel good. Like, if I can help you with something, like, even with my job, if I know I've helped someone, I feel good about that. Yeah, 100%. I've fucking made that person feel better. Like, but there's there's different senses of fulfilment. Yeah, whereas this, I was like, I'll get that, babe. I'll get that, babe. I'll, no, I'll get that. Yeah. I'll do that. Like, And it is it is very ego-driven. Oh, yeah, it makes you feel like... The, like yeah, like, like, you get the bill, and I had it when I was just some little fucking toreg. I, I was, I'd go in for food, and I was only maybe getting the start. The bill would come for 200 quid, and I'm like, I'll just get that. And then I was just the boy at the table, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, whereas now, it's like, yeah, well, I'll give, like, 20 minutes, half hour on the phone to you if you, if you need someone to talk to yeah. or something. And I'm like, fucking hell, do you know what? I've actually made a difference there. Yeah, that and that's more important, whereas at the time, it was very ego-driven. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, so um, it took me... Well, I didn't tell anyone for two weeks. Then I called my best friend up and she came round and I told her. She was like, what the fuck? I was like, fuck me, what the fuck am I gonna do? <laughs> We're sat at my dining table, like bottle of wine, like. Fucking hell. Fuck. Are you scared? Yeah, I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I, I just was like. Anything's better than this. Yeah. Um, like, obviously the relationship at the, that point wasn't good anyway. So in my head, I'm thinking I can get out because I don't want to feel like shit anymore. Yeah. I hated feeling like shit. So powerful. It's horrible. Mm. And I thought I could get out of that, but I've got a kid and I, I was kind of, had no self-worth or no confidence in myself of what I could do. Yeah, because you're, you're not just leaving that life. Like, you've lost yourself completely. I've you've lost gone myself. You've being such a grateful child, having fun with friends to just materialistic stuff and just being a mum yeah. like you just think you're a mum which yeah. is a great job but it's not actually yeah. it's a very unthankful job kids are fucking horrible brass <laughs> <laughs> they don't thank you for nothing <laughs> <laughs> I mean you don't care because yeah. like when you're a mum that's what you do yeah. but yeah like honestly yeah. they drain you take 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 take, <laughs> take 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 don't even give fucking cuddles after time little bastards <laughs> I came back from my show and went well, it's not a sword I'm not fuck <laughs> Jake, another show. Jake, <laughs> I need a fucking sword for this kid. Um, yeah, no. So I, I had him as well, and and so it took me about six weeks. My ex came back. Well, he actually t he I hadn't changed the locks at that point, and I came back one day. He was in the house acting normal, and I was like, "What the hell's happening?" Um, transpires he'd put cameras up in the house, and yeah, it it goes like he'd put cameras up in the house. He had been like in the house, moving things around, making me think I was mad when I'd come back. Um, like opening drinks. Like I had a really expensive bottle of um, champagne someone had bought me. And I was like, oh, I'll save it. Why do people do that? I'll save that. Yeah. What the fuck are you saving it for yeah. drinking? <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? I think, yeah, it's, I've been like that. Hey, what's Chris now? I'll save it. And then before you, before you know it, you've just got a cover full of fucking bevies and there's dust all over it. Would you, <laughs> I've ne I've, since then I never do that I don't, I, and this is going off at a tangent but I don't have a best cutlery set no. <laughs> I just use the best shit yeah. like I buy trainers like I like Air Force Ones I'll buy them um, and um, I think oh, I'll save them for but now I fucking no, won't fucking wear them yeah. fucking wear them mm. like what if I get run over Life's tomorrow too short, 100%. I'll be up there looking down thinking I never but fucking such, wore them such a, good, oh, such a good way to look at things <laughs> Is it? My dad does that. Yeah. My dad always goes, you can never take it with you, love. Because yeah. if I'm in a decision about buying something, mum's like, oh, no. You know, I, 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 was, I watched a video the other day. I think it was Tyson Fury. It's like the only thing we take with us is memories. Doesn't matter what doesn't matter yeah. what watches. Experience doesn't matter. Experience over things. Experience over, doesn't matter what watches, what clothes, what cars no. you've got. When you're laying in that box, there's nothing. Yeah. Or when, when you're in that bed, memories is the only yeah. thing that's going to be the that, last And thing. my dad says that. My mum's yeah. a bit more, like, my dad's more like me, but mum's a bit more level. So yeah. thank God he had her for business decisions because yeah, fucking hell. Exactly. But, um, yeah, so he had been doing, like, really weird shit like that. 
and um, I literally was on the point of thinking I need to be sectioned because I thought I was going mad. Like I'd go back and chairs would be moved and that, and I knew I hadn't done it. But Fuck. who else is doing it? Yeah, like it's got to be me. It's got to be me. I called. I called the police about it because I thought someone was like breaking into my house, and then there could it couldn't. There was no signs of like someone breaking into the house. That's a head fuck. I was proper head fucked. The day I knew it wasn't me was when um, my dogs had been let out, and I'd never have left. Like we had a sounds weird, like a dog flap thing. Yeah. So they could go in and out the <laughs> garden, but the um, <laughs> the gate had been left over, and I'd never have done that. It doesn't matter how mental I am. Yeah, like, you... like I would never have done that to my dogs. But yeah, it, it was re- it was really fucked for a while and um just the way the relationship was it was kind of making me feel like it was my fault the whole time for everything Narcissistic yeah it, relationship. and gaslight I, oh, I knew nothing about gaslighting no. until i came out of this relationship and it was a massive eye-opener for me to to see what had happened over the years and it's still something at my age now that i'm healing from because i automatically go into blame myself mode like i which I don't think it's a bad thing because I do think we should always look at ourselves to grow and see how we can improve ourselves. But I will automatically at some points go, right, so it's my fault, I've done this. And and yeah. automatically I apologise constantly. Dee tells me off all the time. She's like, stop saying sorry, stop it. And I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, mate, sorry. Like, Because when you've been told it's your fault constantly, it's just, it's inbuilt, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it took me a while to because I believed I wouldn't be able to look after my son on my own because that's what was in my head. And I believed um, that I was going mad and that I probably needed some form of fucking help because yeah. I was moving shit around. And if, if, when you're in your own thoughts and you're getting told and you're getting told and you're getting told that thoughts become reality. That's what you, it is. You start, you literally, if you're telling yourself or someone's telling you every single day you're no good like, I don't care what anyone says like, if you don't know the power of thought and you don't know how to get yourself out of that then that is all you're going to believe and that's all you're going to think and then you become that yeah, so you 100%. become that negative yeah, yeah, yeah. person like you're so negative you think like this all the time why like and so you, then you do become that person which essentially fundamentally isn't you within and it's quite hard to yeah. be someone you're not because you have to try yeah don't you you, you manifest and become that without yeah. doing it so yeah, th- th- that was a really tough time, and I remember um, I had two horses at the time, and within finding out about this whole thing about my ex, one horse I had to have put to sleep, and then another one did a ligament in its foot, and it was one that I was actually competing properly at the time, um, and that was a big thing for me, um, and so then I essentially had to retire it, and I had no money to pay for this horse. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, and um, he he was one of my biggest achievements because I remember when I rode I was riding this horse and a girl said to me um, I said I fucking want this horse I love this horse it was proper decent I was like oh I'll do some bits on this yeah she went people like you people like you don't have horses like that and I thought I'll fucking buy this horse you watched me I did <laughs> brilliant I love Who it are you yeah, telling me it? that I won't get that horse pick up that shit yeah fuck it <laughs> so I went out and bought the horse no I did it took me a long time but I was this horse was a massive thing for me yeah like um, I'd done it all on my own and um, we were doing well so that happened and I remember finding this old field to keep it and it's all I could afford and um, it was pissing down with rain one day like like it was a shit day this other horse I'd had to have put to sleep heartbreaking yeah my husband's fucking left I'm like, I've got no money. I'm in debt up to my eyes. I haven't got a job. I've got no bank card. My parents aren't away. And I've got no food in the fucking fridge. I was driving back and I thought, you're a shit mum. You're a shit friend. You can't even own a horse. You can't even fucking buy food. I thought, just drive off this fucking corner. Just fucking, just do it now. Everyone's going to be better off without you. Fuck. And I turned the corner and I pulled into a lay-by and I, I, I thought, I've never f- had a thought like that before. And it really, it was really powerful. It ma- made me stop and think and I thought you've just thought about killing yourself and I thought oh no only people like in my head I was like Whoa. you don't do that like and I remember sitting there crying Carl's the best place to cry in it oh like, man I was, I was, I Carl was, or shower mate sometimes I'll sit sometimes I'll sit in my car after a long day and I'll just sit there and I'll just do fuck all so I'll just 
Peace. Best, best place, isn't it? Peace. Car? Yeah. So I had a little cry in the car. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck, like you need to see someone or you need to do something about this. Yeah. Um, do you think at that point that was just absolutely everything coming out? I think so. I hadn't cried at this point because I'm quite a... The way my mind works, being a bit on the spectrum, I'm quite practical. So if there's a problem, I'll just try and solve it. Yeah. It's not like for me, sometimes I can lack a bit of emotion in that sense. Yeah. And because it's more of a logical thing for me. So if there's like I necessarily my thought process is like if something came up and it was really expensive, I would never think I can't afford it. I would think, how do I afford it or yeah. or how? That's give me goosebumps because that's like people don't realise that that way of thinking creates reality yeah because look like I'm going to be honest with you I'm a 40 year old single mum that, yeah. that's it like uh, but I enable myself to have a life that I want do I want more yes will I get more yes yeah. I will but currently I'm pretty content with what I've got are there things for next year I want to do? Fuck yeah, there's things mm. for next year I want to do. Will I do? Of course I will. Yeah. Don't have to shout about them. I'll just take a little step each time to get there. But um, at that point, that thought process was gone. I knew I, I knew I didn't really want to die, but I just felt hopeless. Yeah. Like, hopeless. Like, I didn't... I'm a practical person. I couldn't fix it and I couldn't solve it. I'm I, At this point, I've decided I'm going... I've got no money. I've moved back into a spare room in my mum and dad's house. Mm. So I'm sharing a sofa bed, fucking uncomfortable, <laughs> with my, like, not even two-year-old. Um, all my stuff is being kept in their caravan out the front of their house, oh, all my clothes. Yeah. I'm paying some guy cash to keep the rest of my shit in some lock-up somewhere. Fucking like, I've gone from having everything to being an absolute shit tip at the age of, in my 30s. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't, want that and, and i felt sorry for myself i'm not gonna lie no. fucking wallowed for ages no. i'm like what the fuck i'm a 30 odd year old woman like i'm gonna be getting divorced i've got fuck all i don't own mm. anything everything's gone i've got nothing one minute one minute you're not even noticing how much petrol you put in the car next, next minute, minute I've, I've got i can't afford i remember being in my house before i'd moved back home and obviously i'd f make sure my kid was fed my parents were in new zealand i was not gonna fuck up their Mm. I weren't going to call them and mm. tell them but I needed fucking money yeah. I had no money and I had one tin of tuna which I had to eat for two days <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> and I had two rivetas you know they're great I can't eat them now that's fucking that. I think people watching this I don't think like the scale of that is ridiculous yeah like, like no food but I didn't even have like I couldn't even I, could, I had no rice I couldn't but, but I didn't it wasn't like now I'll go in go in the old Volvo, <laughs> go in the little secret compartment and there'll be like, I don't know, six quid in coins or something. You know when you just throw them in? Because yeah, yeah. I don't think about, hate. I hate having coins. I don't know. Uh, and yeah. so um, just throw them in. So it works. I, did, I couldn't even do that because I didn't have a fucking car <laughs> brush. I was literally like, great. <laughs> There's no, your scapegoat is not there either. Like, I've yeah. got like, I've got nothing. I can't even afford to go to the shop and get a Diet Coke. Fucking like I'm hell. literally like, had not even one penny and I was like what the fuck has your life come to like mm. you literally fuck all you're mm. you're nothing um, and, and the top seems so far just anything just getting up seemed a fucking struggle mm. if it wasn't for Miles I, I don't I dread to think what would happen because I knew I had to do things for him yeah. I knew I had to get up and feed him it sounds really stupid but I had this horse living in a fucking field I had to go like, I used to pay for people to look after the horse yeah. now I'm having to go up twice a day to look after it and um, piss in rain whatever I'm, I'm having to go up and do, do it so I had things that made me get up if I didn't have them I wouldn't have done it mm. I'd have just stayed in bed because there would have been no point for me yeah. just didn't know what to do um, yeah so um, I just fucking stayed at my mum and dad's for ages and like <laughs> wallowed in self-pity and and just fucking was a miserable bitch until one day I fucking thought you've got to sort your shit out this isn't normal um and I went to see a life coach she was running a dream believe and achieve course thing my friend one of my good friends um Kelly was like come on you can do this I've got no money. She was like, find money. So my mum paid for it for me to do it. 
and it just changed my whole fucking she introduced me to like the law of attraction and um mindset and thinking and gradually i just started getting my confidence back like bit by bit um and when it's like if you're looking for yellow cars yeah, that's right, yellow cars. Yeah. Mm. I, I do, me and Mars play it all the time. Even if I'm on my own, if I'm like with someone, I'll be like, yellow car. Oh, fuck, I'm not playing it. Because I'm always on the lookout yeah, for because I want to beat him the whole yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm literally like fucking seeing first. You can imagine you just doing it and just digging your son. <laughs> Absolutely. Punch yellow yeah, car. and he goes, oh, God, you've got the mini. It's two points. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, that was a massive turning point in me, seeing her and just understanding more about like energy. And it just took me back to being young because that's how I was naturally. Yeah. And I, I believe all kids are naturally. Yeah. My kid is. But it's just but how they get reprogrammed. It's how they get reprogrammed. I, 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 I wouldn't go into this too much, but I think 100% through school it's how they're reprogrammed. Yeah, like he, he will literally be playing with a stick and a bit of dirt in the mud. Mm. Happy as... He's so in that moment and I love him for that. And, yeah. and I, lo- I think... I want to be more like that, mm. and I and that's something I take with me now. I try, I try and be like that. With you can't do it all the time. No, of course. With most things I do, <clears throat> I try. I make sure I'm like that when I'm massaging people. I'm yeah. completely in the moment, just massaging them, so I know what I'm doing. But just in ge- general, even when I'm driving, sometimes I don't put music on if I'm on my own. I'm, I'll, yeah, I'll do that sometimes because I think yeah. I just want to know what I'm doing. Because yeah. I don't know about you, sometimes you can drive somewhere and not even fucking remember. No, I do. I talk this about like people that live like that robot life. Like literally, you wake up and your your drive to your job. I guarantee 99.9% of the people don't remember the drive to work. Yeah. They're just... But do you know what, But That was my life mm. at living at my mum's. I, 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 I don't remember it because I felt so shit about myself. Yeah. I felt really shit. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just, I knew something had to change. And um, I knew I loved horses. So I knew th- they make me feel really grounded. So I can go up and be having such a shit day and it's a very similar feeling for me to being in the gym yeah you know like when you zone out and like you could just be there on your own really put your phone in your bag and that's it yeah because you don't re- i don't see the people around me mm. and um like it's not that i'm rude but you just focused on your not on yourself but you can try i it's a way for me to clear my mind and that's how i feel when i'm around horses so i knew that so then i started riding yeah started seeing um this life coach a bit more i had have you heard of eft it's like tap in therapy mm, i have heard but i've not digged into it i haven't needed to yeah so i i had some of that which was probably the most powerful thing that i've really ever, yeah because um i struggle um and i think it's just with my process and stuff i struggle with um showing emotion or um which has hindered me in the past and has been used in relationships before and i can understand how it can come across but i really struggle with emotion and um it's re- it's a really bizarre therapy it literally is tapping certain points of your body and you say they get you to say certain words and it was really powerful because i couldn't say the words um i deserve love wouldn't it physically couldn't come out of my yeah. mouth couldn't say it and um, I tried to say it, and it was the first time I'd cried. When I say cried, I mean, Go on. It, it weren't pretty. <laughs> I looked like it's a powerful, fucking though. red pig powerful. afterwards. I, I, like, I get it with some of my clients. I just, I was like, what does happiness look like to you on the first call? And uh, plug in my life coaching now, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I said, what does happiness look like to you? And I just go quiet. And before you know it, I cry in the eyes out, I don't know. Or nine times out of ten, it'd be a really materialistic thing, like a holiday or something like that. Yeah. But nine times out of ten, people have no clue what makes them happy. No, no, it's it is it's it's a strange thing, really, because you don't know you feel like that. Mm. I honestly, like when people talk to me and stuff, I'm like I come across as a confident person. I would say I am now. And to do bodybuilding, people generally mm. think you're com- you're confident. Yeah just because you walk around in very little clothes or whatever but it's not about it's not about that and it's it's i wouldn't say i'm overly confident i said 90 percent of the people that do do bodybuilding aren't aren't co- yeah i i will agree mm. with you there mm. and um yeah it was just really powerful for me to understand 
that I deep down thought I didn't deserve to be loved or I wasn't worthy of being loved. And it was really hard and it was a massive thing for me. Um, and I, I had some with her actually online over um, Zoom, over COVID, just because I thought it's hard for everyone being, mm. and I was on my own being locked in a house with a fucking five year old. <laughs> Chaos. Ooh, homeschooling, brilliant. If I can get that tapping on. <laughs> um, and I cried again, yeah. which was meant to, I could say it this time and it was mm. much easier, but I know that it's something that I, I'm still working on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I saw her and she kind of helped me through it um, and she helped me put some plans in place and it was there. I um, first found out about vision boards and it was this course and we were doing our own vision board and um, it, on that vision board, I found a picture of a bikini girl, that Jamie Eason actually, and I used to follow her. Um, she's someone I kind of looked up to and thought I'd love to do this. And I found it and I stuck it on there and I put, I will compete. And then she was like, it's not, it's not, you haven't niched it down enough. When, when are you going to com compete? Like it needs to be when. Everything has to be detailed. And I put, I'll, I'll, I'll find my own house for me and my, she was like, when are you going to do this? Yeah. Like. It has, to, it has to be finished. Yeah, yeah. So then... Otherwise, it's just an open promise. There's nothing... But then, it has to be but then it, for me, it hit me. How fucking simple is that? Mm. Like, how fucking simple is it? You fucking say you want to do something, put a date in, then oh. you just work towards work it. Everything. We were talking... Literally, we just had this conversation and it's like... It's so frustrating because, uh, to me, life is simple because it's like... Right, so with the podcast, I wanted to do a podcast... It wasn't no. It was no coincidence. I got Larry yeah. bumped into me on when I was filming one, and then straight away, right? How am I going to fund it? Right, I'm going to get a sponsor. Put it out to the universe. Got a sponsor. Set dates. Got in touch. Made it happen. That's it. It's. I. I but I could. It was so powerful for me. This thing. And I'm. But I remember just first of all looking through magazines, having quite a nice time. I was sat around in this lovely like house with all these women. Um. If I'm honest, they were all like. They were all in a different situation to me. Yeah. They were all kind of in unhappy in marriages, mm. had a lot of money. At the time, I'm driving, so I'm, I'm, I don't even think I had a car at that yeah. point. My mate's fucking picking me up everywhere. Mm. Um, so I'm in a different situation in that um, sense. But mentally, we're all similar. And I'm just sat around having a nice time, free lunch, all that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just quite nice sticking it down. And I'd never thought, thought of it. But when she said that, and I was like, oh right and she was like stick it somewhere you can see every day yeah and like then you'll wait you're woken up and you're faced with the facts that you want this and if you don't do anything for it it's just no, it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen no. and so that um was how i kind of got back on track so then i thought right okay at that point single mum self-employed paying a load shit ton of debt off um like how am I going to get a house no one's going to give me a house so I just walked into all the estate agents said look this is me I'm I'm going to pay my rent I've got this much money I can't really prove it mate <laughs> <laughs> I can't really Fucking prove hell. it yeah. like but I will pay the, like give me a punt like mm. the, and then um, a landlord was in the house the landlord who, uh, who has my house was in the estate agents at the time I was like I'll give you a punt I'm like so um, uh, it Done. gives me goosebumps. It's like so for anyone that's watching this, don't understand law of attraction or anything like that. So your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. So you plant the thought in your head. That's the seed. Now you don't just plant it and go, oh, "I'm going to do this," and then sit on the sofa and wait for it to happen. Like you have to wake up every single day and believe you already have it in your life. Well, to be honest, Brad, sharing a sofa bread bed <laughs> with like a one-year-old yeah. in a box room, yeah, ain't the one. Nah, not in your thirties. So, your thoughts. So <laughs> it thought... makes you get. It makes you get out. I was like, leave anything. <laughs> I'll get out of bed early. Riser. Yeah. So our thoughts determine how we feel, and how we feel yeah. determines how we act. So our thoughts get us feeling a certain way. Yeah, I literally wake up every morning with a feeling within me, and I it gives me goosebumps, and it makes me happy, and I I know I'm attracting the life I want. So my feelings determine how I act. And how I act every day is, is hope and it, it makes me happy regardless of the outcome. But that is how you manifest everything, the thoughts, the feelings and the actions. And you have gone from sitting in a road with the pissing down rain, crying your eyes yeah. out, wanting to drive off to yeah. then 
out of nowhere, literally just walking into an estate agent's going, I've got fuck all. Yeah. But I'll guarantee every single month when rent comes, it will. And then you've gone from sharing a sofa bed with your little one at your mum and dad's to then getting your little one his own room. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it hasn't been easy. I fucking graft No, of course. And I still graft yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I've made that sound easy, but... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no yeah, yeah. yeah. But, no, but that is essentially how it is. Yeah. But you can't be scared of working. No. Now, like... You know, do I want to work this much in future? No. And I will put things in place at some point to mm. change that. But currently, at the moment, for what I want to do and where I see myself, I'm going to have to work really fucking hard yeah. to, to achieve what's in my head. I've got no doubt I'll achieve it because I've achieved so far everything I've wanted to. So I don't know yeah. why I wouldn't be able to achieve anything else. But it's not easy. It's fucking mm. hard. You're, there's going to be times you sit there crying. Shower's a good one, isn't it? You can just sit with the <laughs> shower just get on in you. It comes, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Then you can just sit in the shower. And then you get out on your face <laughs> and you're wet anyway. It's <laughs> so all right. Just, Therapy uh, session, isn't it? Have a cry in the shower. Get out. Then you're all right. Then but, you can, like, crack on. And it, But it is going to be hard. But I, I feel like for people that are in tough times and it's not patronising but especially for me like I was in my 30s mate I like 30s going to be your best years yeah but in my 20s I wouldn't have seen myself as a single mum at 40 Mm. I still wouldn't I wouldn't have seen myself as a bodybuilder at 40 do you know what I mean but as a single mum at 40 it's not what was my life plan and it's helped me it's helped me realise that A (coughs) your life plan it will never go the way you think it's mm. going to go, but that's all right yeah. because it'll always lead to better things. It's good. It, just, it puts you on your path to where you're going to go. Yeah. B, the, doesn't matter how old you are. No. And and people in their 20s that think they need to have it figured out by 30... It's not, just Instagram probably, saying it's, it's not going to happen, no. mate. And when you're in your 30s and you think it's going to be all sorted by 35, it's not no. going to happen because things change and... and like it sounds weird but I'm 40 I feel inside exactly the same as I did when I was 20 amazing like I don't feel any different no um, I mean I, I, I would still like to go out to an old rave sometimes but I'd get there and go fucking hell what's the time we'll take me, me and my missus and take you on trust me we, we still love the old rave <laughs> like, I'd be like oh god is it bedtime yet we'd like, be acid though <laughs> 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 the um what I find incredible is um I don't think a lot of people realise how how hard it is to come from a life where you've got in a relationship and everything's funded and given to you to then having nothing. I mean, and this isn't stereotypical, a lot of people would look for the easy option out. A lot of people would look for maybe going back into a relationship like that just to put a roof over their son's head. And I do understand people do have to do what they have to do. And do you know what? No judgment. I don't care. People, and especially single mums, I have got a total, on a different level respect for yeah especially single mums where dads have been inconsistent um because it's not financially it's fucking hard but mentally it's just little things like when you've got to choose their school and you have to do that on your own yeah like and sometimes it gets sad like when he had his first steps or when he does something for the first time and you want that person yeah because in my head he was conceived in love yeah in my head it might not have been like that in the relationship but i believe yeah that and so you want that person to share it with yeah um and so it like we don't have that it's just kind of like you you fucking you 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 just make sure they know how proud you are of them but um that's the hard thing and that and and single mums yeah that that are able to um like work put a roof over their heads i don't care what they do to put a roof over their kids they can do whatever they fucking want i fucking respect them it's 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 an unthankful and a really fucking hard job um so yeah and um like i'm lucky i've got people in my life who um are in similar situations and they're like really inspiring so i i can look at them you you have those people in your life and you think do you know what I want to be more like you. Shout out D on that one. Yeah. I know that one's aimed at D. <laughs> yeah, Shout out like, D on that you, one. And I think sometimes you draw these people into your life yeah, for a reason. Massive, you two are like sisters. And you're yeah. both, it's, it's mental, like... You, when I see you two as pals, and then obviously I learn your backstory, and then obviously I know about D, like... 
it's, there's no coincidence the universe has put you into the No, world. and at finals, we just, like, do you know what? She won't mind me saying this, but we was at finals backstage and it was COVID, so it was all a bit weird. And I heard this girl and I thought, oh, she's a bit loud. Turned around, she was banging on about custard creams. I thought, she's my fucking vibe. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I can imagine that. Like, yeah, babe, this like, one of them. No, she's like, oh, all I'm craving is a custard cream. <laughs> and I'm like, where's that girl? Yeah, <laughs> Like, up. yeah, he, and he I was like, a- She's a special soul, dude. Yeah, I've, got, really I've got a hell of a lot of time. Oh, so. mate, she's mental. And I see her and, like, we're so similar. Like, we finish each other's sentences. Yeah. We have the same... It's so mad. Yeah. We can text each other. We've texted each other the same thing at the same, the same time, time randomly yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, love that. Off. That's that's goosebumps, that is. But we're so similar, yet so op- opposite. Mm. And her opposite is what I want to be. Yeah. So I see her and I see her. She's fucking organised. Yeah. Like... She like she looks good every day. Do you know what I mean? I get up looking like a scarecrow. I'm like, she's organised. Like she has no empty monster cans in mm. her cars or anywhere. And I'm like in my car, getting some water bottles. Like, really? <laughs> she, 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 what I mean? son, don't cut your finger on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Stop drinking it. Shit. Yeah. Fill it up with still water. Some in There's it. your water bottle for school. <laughs> <laughs> like, but so you, I think you attract these people. Yeah. For a, and also, without her, I wouldn't have like met Jake. <coughs> yeah. Like, I wouldn't be sat here with you. Yeah. So things always happen for a reason. Yeah. Like, I met her at the time. I needed a new coach. How weird is that? Like that things like that just. But it, oh, I get all. I, he's gonna get so bored of me saying this. But I've had goosebumps all week. But them stories are amazing. Like, I met Jake in the car park by Cheetah's gym. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I, a friend put us in touch. I, I literally just, yeah, just see him in a car park at Cheetah's gym. Um, and then I just see him in the gym, like maybe like two weeks later or something. And I went over there, just skinny little boys, like, "Hi, Jake. Uh, can can you prep me for my season in IB for or something like that?" Like, yeah. And then that friendship was built. But that was this is the first podcast that's like we've gone into like the proper law of attraction and the universe oh, right. and okay. things yeah, like yeah. that so like people have come on and we've spoke a little bit about it but you're a living proof that it works well for the Arnolds so yeah um, yeah this story's yeah. sick yeah, so yeah. um for the Arnolds um so the Ar- if- by the way anyone that watched it Arnolds oh, is yeah. a huge huge bodybuilding yeah and we had the first one in the UK in the UK so this is like a huge bodybuilding event um a, pretty much every bodybuilder aspired to be there at some yeah stage. and um I'd kind of done it for like a bucket list thing that I wanted to do I didn't ex- I didn't have expectations in it but I, I think I have quite big ambitions quietly or yeah. subconsciously and I don't automatically know them yeah so um like I, obviously I saw this life coach and then I just you just look through things on Instagram don't you well algorithms they send you shit yeah. and like I was reading books and um I always I've got like a goal of listening to a podcast every day or having reading like a, a mindset book each week well I don't read because my brain I listen to it yeah like it like in the car and stuff um and I had this Jim Carrey thing and he wrote a check or something he was really scared he, he pulled up outside the Malibu house and wrote down I think it was like a three million dollars or something, something like yeah. that yeah and then he put it in his wallet yeah and then he sold Dumb and Dumber and it come up at that price uh, the, ten million dollars it was yeah, it was ten mil yeah and then he sold Dumb and Dumber for and made ten million dollars on Dumb and Dumber yeah, yeah. so I read that and I thought because he'd, he'd folded it up and put it in his wallet hadn't he so since I've read that I've like written um so I have a I do have a morning routine but I like to call it a baggy one because obviously I've got like a, a six year old yeah, and he gets up at five every morning so I don't have alone time in the morning but mm. I call it a baggy one because I'm the type of person that if I if I'm given something to do Jake will tell you if I can't do it 100% I feel like shit myself yeah. so if I make myself have a very structured morning routine and the kids being a, a, a little nightmare. shit yeah. I'm, I will go oh you're so shit you can't even so I don't yeah. I don't, it's just, if it, if I can do it, I'll do it. It needs, have to, be, it needs to be relaxed. Yeah, I have certain things, like you get up, you make the bed, you clean your teeth, you get ready yeah. or whatever. We have breakfast. <coughs> we He says what he's grateful for. I say what I'm grateful for. Bish, bash, bosh, get out the door, school. I'm real. But sometimes, like, if I've got time on my own, I will do it. Yeah. But I always write down, like, goals or aspirations or just thoughts that I have in my head sometimes you know sometimes someone will say something to you and it strikes a nerve and you think I need to remember yeah. that when I'm sh- feeling shit so I've got like a little book for that it's, I'm, f- it's full I'm of a, shit I'm literally as you walked in I'm on my diary and I like had to get my gratitude done and my affirmations before I start this yeah because it because I just like to 
Like if someone read the book, they'd think, "Cool, she's a nutter," because yeah. it's just got random shit in it. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. just absolute random. Just get shit. it down though. It's yeah, so just right. get it's it out. Therapeutic. Your head. Yeah, um, and so like I write things down, and at the beginning of the year, I like I know goals need to be broken down, but I like to write a big goal mm. um, to try and hit, and then them little goals make it, don't they? Yeah. So I'd um, written them down, and I just. I can't, I'm not organised I can't have a purse like Dee's got this really nice Louis Vuitton purse and I think get it I'd lose it I'd yeah, lose it somewhere yeah. so everything's in the back of my phone <laughs> everything <laughs> honestly I'm so unorganised gym membership bus pass no, it is. back of the phone everything <laughs> library card because I'm old <laughs> 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 um, so I'm putting them down and, and I, I'd obviously read I don't even remember it I will win them I will win masters at the Arnold's like folded it up put it in and I was getting my makeup done on the day of the Arnold's and the makeup girl accidentally like whooshed my phone off the um, seat and it broke the case I never take the phone out of the case and this was at the bodybuilding show that you were well, in, in the hotel in getting the hotel my makeup done on the day of the show and um, so I never take it out so I had to take it out, obviously, and then got back and I was like, what's that little bit of manky, proper scrubby bit of manky paper? <laughs> like, opened it up. I thought, what the fuck? That is... And it said, I win the Arnold's. I was like, I sent it to Jake. I was like, oh, fucking did it. <laughs> yeah, Jake sent me the video and he was like, you will fucking love this. So that was like my, uh, I'd seen you in the gym, we'd have a few conversations, but that was my proper introduction to you. And Jake um, sent me that. And I was like, mate, you're going to love this. And he done it. And I was like, as soon as I got that, that was when I just dropped me that message. And that is, but it's, again, it's so simple. So simple. <clears throat> it, write it down. And like we, we spoke about this, like you write a goal down every single day. So write a goal down, action points every single day. How the fuck are you going to get to that goal? If you tick every single box, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Well, this is it. Like, and, but <clears throat> like, you might need other people to help you. Like, there's no way I'd mm. have got there. A without D, mm. B without Jake. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, absolutely not. My parents, like, for childcare, like my friends that help me with childcare because it's like obviously training. Of course, hundred percent. And it, at the end of the prep, when I'm smashing out forty-five minutes cardio five times a week on top of my actual training, mm. that's a long time. Yeah. I need childcare for that. And I need it to not impact my kids in a negative way. 100%. So you like, because when it does that, I'm out. It's not going to impact no, him. Like yeah. I want him to see me and be proud of me and see that A, a woman can do this on her own mm. and B, he still had a really good life. And even when I'm broken, dead on my ass in prep, I'm still taking him to the park. If yeah, he wants yeah, to go yeah. to the park, 100%. that sort of thing. Why you're working all day. Yeah, yeah. Look, but but it, that's... It's not me giving out, oh, it's really hard. That's my choice. Yeah, yeah. It's always my choice. Yeah. Um, if I don't want to do it, stop. I will stop doing it. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, but like you work every day towards it. Like I said, I will win the Ar I will win Masters at the Arnold. I'd completely forgotten about that. And I, I'm, or I'm kind of in the mindset of I go into every show, no expectation, like none. Um, and I like I find I do find praise difficult. So like if Jake sends back good feedback, I, f I get awkward. I str yeah. I archive messages like I, str I, if I struggle I, with if it. If I get something on Instagram, um, may it, from someone or something, of maybe I've helped them. I read it. I I'll, I'll put it. I'm read and I put it in the archive and I'm like, I'll do you get that? Bit, yeah, I'll get awkward. I hate Weird, it. it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate like, it. I try and palm it off. Somewhere. Yeah, I spoke like, to oh. my counselor about it ages ago and it's just praise that wasn't it. It's weird, it's yeah, weird right. isn't it? It's yeah, so like weird. So he'll say something good, and I'll be like, "Oh, yeah. can you just be a cunt again?" Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Trust me, just, it's, it's like, so strange. He's like, "No, I think you're going to do well." I'm like, "I don't want to hear that yeah. again." I, I have taken all the steps I need to. I know what I want to do, but I can't. I don't. I like. And Dee would say, "You're going to fucking smash this, mate. You're looking. Yeah, you look insane." Yeah, and I'll be like, "Thank you, but I can't." I find that difficult to deal with. Yeah, which I think is good because it's just like a relaxed. Relax it's relaxed outcome. but also bodybuilding is subjective yeah. if that judge likes me they like me yeah. if they don't like me I'm not going to place as long as I'm better than I was like like whatever show I do next if I come in and I look better than I did at the Arnold's that's a win to me yeah 100% don't give a shit um, if I place brilliant yeah like so it, it like I don't have I'm not one of those people that um like yeah I'm winning I, I just can't I yeah. can't have that mindset yeah. but it doesn't mean you're not ambitious it's nice to win in silence though 
hundred percent. Like yeah. it's hard work. That's what Dad mm. says. Like work in silence. Let success talk. I think. Um, I think when when you're that relaxed, I think that when, so we're going to vibrations. Like that's when you're at your natural vibration. So a lot of people will go into maybe a bodybuilding show, a job interview, a relationship with fear. And as soon as fear is there, self doubts there. As soon as self doubts there, you attract anxiety. As soon as anxiety is there, you attract overthinking. So that's going to make your thought process, it's going to make you unwell. But if you go in there, relax, natural vibration, thoughts, feelings, actions. Imagine the out, like, so visualization is massive. Just imagine the, out- like the, the outcome of you being happy yeah. or the feeling of what it's going to be like when you succeed. But I think a lot of people in that world will go in there, with, what if, what if? Because it is a very egotistical world. What if I don't look good? Yeah. We'll just go in there and be better than what you was and then you've won. And yeah. so then you've got a winning mindset already and it's so simple. You're so right, actually, that happens. Because if you focus on something, like you said, that's what you become. Yeah. And like, I f- it's the same for anything, isn't it? Like, um, I cracked my rib. Um, during prep and it would be really easy to think wait wait let's just (laughs) reel it so you broke cracked or broke your rib during prep for this show not for for, because i did naturals i did the naturals prior to it so i did it i can't remember two weeks prior i remember yeah um but like so the same with that i knew something had gone i did it on the bloody v squat i think it's just where i was so Lean, yeah, yeah, like yeah. too much weight, yeah. And I felt it pop, and I've done it. Bef- I've done it before riding, mm. and um, yeah, um, I felt it go, and like I thought, if I focus on that, I'm gonna be shit. Yeah, but I'm still doing this. Yeah, because I've said I'm doing this. Yeah, just don't focus on it. Huge. Don't matter. Yeah, that's that's how it is. Like even today, I had an appointment in Worthing at nine, and um, I was driving over, and the traffic was mental, and I was like fuck's sake what the fuck and I was like right no so I got to um, Lance in I was like it's going to be fucking clear the rest of the way I was like bam, bam five minutes shit. early that's <laughs> it <laughs> like, I beat the sack now fucking good I love it yeah. I love it that's pff, what a story so I just want to put it back so how how did the gym come into your life because a lot of people uh, have come on here you know we had Jason that came on here to tell his story um, we've had other people come on a gym is a saviour for people yeah how did that because you was just horse riding yeah and then um obviously um i had to the horse i had had hurt its leg right so it's turned out in the field i rehabbed it and got it back i couldn't afford it Mm. like at the time couldn't afford to have it back so i put it out on loan and to some beautiful people and um to a little girl and he's taught her to ride and and they were the they came into my life when i needed them yeah and so i'm really grateful to the universe for them and so he went with them for four years and I didn't have like that outlet and I needed to do something. So I just kind of just joined like the normal, the gym group sort of gym and started going yeah. and was like, yes, mate. Like it's, I found, I find it hard to meditate and I've tried a lot to do meditation. It's not for me mm-hmm. because my, the way my brain works, I'm ADHD. It's my brain's like spaghetti all the whole time. Yeah, just like loads of computer tabs open constantly mm. all shutting down all opening different things Have you tried to do it for maybe like two minutes i've tried and and i'm like i said my way of thinking is if i can't do it i'm shit yeah and so then i have to get out of that mindset because then it just starts getting a bit negative for me like yeah. uh, um and i'm hopefully that will change but currently at the minute i find it really difficult to just shut down um and so um yeah the gym gives me that yeah so that's why it's not that i'm like aggy in the gym or moody but um i'll only really train with d yeah because we it's the same intensity it's the same intensity like good. and we've got a great relationship like i see you dancing about on that yeah right? so yeah. if we're up and we're and we're great like it's massive energy yeah but i know if she's feeling shit and i can still train with her and i i if she don't want to talk to me she don't want to talk yeah. to you. and but it won't make a difference to no. our training we'll still spot each other or do you know what i mean yeah. or we'll go to the gym together and she'll train back and i'll do legs yeah 
but it's a way for me if I'm in and she knows it's the same yeah. for me we can sit in the car for an hour <clears> and not say a word and it ain't fucking awkward no is it fuck no we'll that's good sit there that's, like, that's so sick yeah. me and Jake do that at home we'll yeah. just be sitting in the kitchen and fuck all get said it's like see that brother it's like sweet mate have a good day yeah, and exactly that. Yeah. Uh, there's no... Some people have to <coughs> feel, feel and... It's uh, bollocks. Oh, I can't bollocks. Or the ones where you don't talk to... I've got mates that I don't talk to for a long time. Could mm. be like three, four months. And then they'll ring me and it's like... I spoke to them every single day. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. And so... so I, isn't, Yeah, it's not that maggy or moody or whatever. But I just like to go to um, clear my head. Because like each time I lift something, I'm only thinking about lifting that thing. Yeah. So that for me is when my head's clear. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm thinking, can I feel it in my glute? Or can I feel it in Perfect. this? So then my mind is not going, oh, who are you massaging tomorrow? And, and what's happening? And I'll think, oh, that person's got carpal tunnel. I need to sort that out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, how my yeah. mind works. It's yeah. all over the shop. Mental. Um, so that's how that happened. I'd always like kind of, my brother always followed bodybuilding and he prepped a few times so yeah. I'd always kind of watched it through him and I knew I never thought I'd be capable of doing it because I was all I, I'd put it out there before and I'd been told that I'd be no good at it I've always mm. been naturally really thin and that do you think that um, them thoughts dwell back to when that bloke your ex was telling you it was no good yeah like and also little things like it'd be like oh your legs are like shoelaces and like do you know what yeah. I mean like I'd think oh, I don't I don't carry it's, 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 I don't carry muscle easily it's mad how everything stems down to Past and it's yeah, you know, even though it's happened in the past, it's mad that it still fucks. Yeah, and people are like, oh, you're thin, you're skinny, or whatever. So mm. I just never ever thought that I'd be able to um, do it. But like, if once you've written it down, oh, you can't not do it. Like, like, like oh, when you're like, I'm gonna. When someone said you can't have that horse, I'll I thought I knew horse. that. Yeah. That's my mindset as well. Like I've always been like that. I used to run cross country when I was a kid, and someone told me I wouldn't be able to. Um, I used to run for county, and. Um, I'd forgot my inhaler once because I have asthma, couldn't have it, and I thought I'm gonna stop fucking beating me. I, I like ran it, won it, then like died. It didn't <laughs> die, but obviously, it just, like, mum was like, "Spark out, just stop." I was like, "Absolutely not." No, yeah. That's it's like good. kind of how yeah. I think. But um, yeah, no, the gym just came for me for kind of clearing my head. Really, that's how that um, stemmed, and I found it really difficult not being in the gym over lockdown yeah I'm not gonna I, there was a period of time i um had an accident riding and i ended up breaking my lower back Fuck. yeah and um had to move back into my parents with my son because i couldn't do stairs or yeah. anything Fuck. um and obviously couldn't train for a while then i couldn't walk properly then and that i found that really hard so i know i know that without the gym my mental health does suffer yeah um but i think that's like everyone has think, something yeah, that 100%. they need and mm. i'm very aware of that now and like i said i'm very aware that like there's i still even at my age now i've got so much work to do like in personal growth and healing and stuff but it's just been a massive eye opener to kind of show that it, it doesn't like just because you get older and I used to think this, it, like, you, you think that you're going to change how you feel. Yeah. But you don't. <clears throat> like, you feel, like you're I just, said. all you're doing is picking up clutter. Yeah, like, I still feel the same as you lot. Yeah. I, like, I still swear and, like, I still think, like, you still fundamentally feel the same. Like, you still see, see someone feel, oh, I want to feel good. I want to look like that. Or I want to do that. It's yeah. just that your environment changes around yeah, you. Yeah, 100%. And so for me, it's been like a massive eye-opener. Like, I know what I want to achieve in the next few years. And just because I'm 40 doesn't mean I can't do it like a 20-year-old yeah. would do it. In no. fact, I've got a lot more life experience that I can probably bring... And you've got a lot more of an attitude of just fuck it. Yeah, you don't get... As you get older as well, you don't care. No. You're just like... Like, who are you, you little screw? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> like, why are you telling me I can't do that? But yeah, you just you just don't care as yeah. much. And I think you you get better at only allowing the, those people that want to see you succeed in your life because you care less. Whereas yeah. I think when you're younger, um, people care more about what people think. Social media doesn't help all no. like young people. I think it's can be can be a brilliant but it can be so toxic like people just doing things for likes and yeah. i don't care about no. stuff like that um it doesn't need to be on social media to be out there for the universe yeah. no, 100%. like it's just <clears throat> what you're giving out people that are interested will make sure they find out what's going on yeah 100 percent. and it doesn't mean that um people who don't 
put it out they don't have ambitions or stuff like that it yeah. just means that um they work more quietly towards them but yeah i think age like shouldn't bother people i think um it's obviously harder but it's it there's easier things about it as well but to to start think like when i was in my 30s and it happened i thought my life's fucking over like what the fuck like mm. who's going to want to be with you in your 30s single mum who's going to want that who's going to employ you or who's going to come to you um but it doesn't matter what age you are it's just your mindset yeah because you can everyone i don't care who you are has been through shit in their life 100 percent. um 100%. every single person i know has had something happen to them yeah. and you either dwell on it or you don't and you move yeah and you've got to move because if you don't move you're stagnant that's what we were saying like last night it's just like when things happen like okay don't get me wrong grieve but like you literally put the nail on the head like how am i going to make this situation better and a lot i don't think a lot of a lot of people build up anxiety and overthinking because they don't just put a plan it's so simple again right on paper how am i going to do this right how am i going to get financially get better i'm going to put out a load of feeders to get a job hmm. job done it, it's triggers as well like everyone has triggers like i know just from uh, i'll start getting a little bit of anxiety around christmas only because i'm like shit i've got a pay for stuff i know i can do it yeah I've done it for nearly five years on my own yeah like i know i'm going to be able to do it but it's but now i know it's there yeah i can put something in place to 100%. to stop that but um and it's not easy like people who are struggling financially uh i'm not balling i'm not I'm not driving a supercar, but I'm like, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, but like I, I, I uh, make sure I have the things that I want in my life and yeah. I make sure Miles has everything yeah, he wants 100%. and needs. Um, but it, and it is hard and I'm not saying you shouldn't panic, but you, you just need to slow it all down because there are things you can do. Yeah. Like, like if people are struggling, you, you need to, decrease your outgoings and increase your income yeah. in, and that's the simple that's, way of that's what i meant about if you're struggling financially i know i made it sound really similar but action plans if yeah if you want something to happen you'll make it happen because yeah. how many times have you had to overthink or worry about something and then nine times that well, then you, it just falls into place but it, it falls into place but you've not even thought about it, it yeah like i've gone from eating a tin of tuna mm. um like not having any money um uh, like i go on holiday and just and I make sure I have the things that I want. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, I think it's just about knowing that you're capable of doing it and th that it, it will always work out because the the sad thing is if you think, if this life is it, if this is life and everything's material, what is it? Yeah. Which I know it's a bit deep, but and a little bit woo-woo, but it, it can't just be about your shoes and your fucking Fuck coat. All. No, no, and it's honestly... It's, it's it just, can't be, it's it's it should be about relationships, it's, surely. It's your soul, and it's also, I think people live, want, needs, and things like that, but I don't think people just stop and go, what does my soul actually deserve? Yeah. Like, people just, trust me, you said deep, I'm just going to go on this one now. So a lot of people, they, there's so much want and needs in life and relationships, friendships, materialistic things, but what do you as a person like what energies are you putting out on a daily basis like what soul that you carry around that's with you from start to finish what the fuck do you actually deserve is do you deserve what you're trying to align yourself with yeah and when you work out what you deserve and what you truly want is just i guarantee nine times out of ten is just happiness and fulfillment of course it is and, and wherever we whatever you believe about where we go after this whether it's the universe whether yeah. there's a heaven whether there's yeah. a hell you're religious i don't care yeah but surely everyone wants to leave someone feeling better or, or wants to leave it like she was a good person yeah she helped or he helped or yeah, or massively. you you like you want your children to be like oh that was my mum yeah. or, or she did this or she's made me think like that yeah. surely if people actually get to it everyone would want that i don't know yeah so that brings me on to what a way to close it because yeah. melior means for the pursuit of the better how do you want to better the world and better you as a person and sort of like i just want to know how how your legacy is going to be remembered I just well for for my son really I want him to just know that anything's possible it doesn't matter where we come from yeah. or or what issues we've got if you want something then you can get it it doesn't matter what it is and it doesn't matter if you think it's really out of reach like who thought I'd st stood on the Arnold stage at 40 <laughs> cash <laughs> just cash, cash. <laughs> um fucking what a story um that is going to be so powerful to so many people and 
you're an absolute Sorry, ins- you're an absolute inspiration i mean i knew bits of it but i didn't know to the extent of you know the struggles mentally that come with it and i just think you should be so 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 proud of yourself oh, to be sat here now cutie. and your little one has got an absolute role model to look oh, up to and just there's you. so many women out there that be watching this that will be thinking in their 30s like oh mm. is this just my life and i think you've just opened up if you haven't opened up everyone's eyes to this then they haven't watched it that it doesn't matter what age we mm. get to overnight you can change that thought and restart your life again and i just think you've given so many so much hope to older people older. out there um, <laughs> that, would, that would love that and i know it's going to come into their path at the right time so oh, thank you so thank much you. for coming on and telling your story i really really appreciate it. and i know he's absolutely loved this one oh, thank so you there we go so yeah good thank you everyone thank for you. watching as well this has been lee yeah so i do sports massage and rehab and i'm on instagram and i'm lee clark underscore 81 okay perfect so yeah get involved in that i'll put everything in the description and show some love and support Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <babe. laughs> Mally, I'm <moving> baby. <laughs>